Hello, my brothers and sisters. Uh, this is series uh, 158. And this starts a new chapter, which is chapter 10. And we're going to be talking about the lesson from Israel's idolatry. And very powerful message, I tell you. Um, this is where Paul goes back into the Old Testament writings and in the book of Numbers and talks about how uh, the Israelites didn't do what they were supposed to do. That, 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 was, they, that was disobedient. So he's trying to tell the Corinthian church, he's giving them an illustration of how the Israelites did and what happened to them when they disobeyed God. And so this same illustration also, Paul says, is given to us today as well. We should read these things and find out what happened to the Israelites. It applies to us too. Even though Christ has died for our sin, it still applies to us if we do what is wrong. So that's why Paul is writing, I mean, has written the church and explained some of the things that even they requested of Paul that they needed some answers about. So I'm beginning reading here at 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 13. And it says, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about, and about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by the cloud that moved ahead of them. And all of them walked through the sea on dry land. And he's explaining to the Christians, this is what happened in the past. And number two says, in the clouds and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followed followers of Paul. All of them ate the same spiritual food. And then it says, and all of them drank the same spiritual water. For they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them. And that rock was Christ Jesus. See, Christ was, in, Christ was there too. Uh, the, uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three of them was there when everything happened. Um, they knew what was going to happen. So that's why you couldn't fool Christ, because he already knew. He helped, he helped create everything that God created. So Christ already knows what's going on. Because uh, he has the blueprint on every soul that's in this world. He know your makeup. He know your going through. He know your childhood. Even Jeremiah says he even knew you before you was in your mother's womb. So that shows you how much Christ know about you. You can't fool Christ. You, you dare not even test him. Because he knows you. Um, number five. Um... Yet God was not pleased with most of them, and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Number six says, these things happen as a warning to us. He said, the reason it happened in that day, it was a warning to us today. And this same to us means right now. so that we would not crave evil things as they did. Number seven says, or worship idols as some of them did. As the scripture says, the people celebrated with feasts and drinking, and they endured in, in, in pagan reverie. They endured in, they endured in, in, in pagan reverie. 
Um, see, because you have to remember where the Israelites came from. Israelites came from Egypt, where they did all these things. They 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 lived for uh, worshiping idols. Uh, they were very rebellious. So, and that's why you have to watch the company that you keep because it will ruin you. Because if you're around it too much, you will mess up. Guaranteed. You will take on some of those traits that they took on, just like the Israelites did. They was around those people. Some of those people that came out of Israel it, it, Egypt was not Israelites. They were sojourners that lived in Israel. I mean Egypt. So they came along with the Israelites. They got the same treatment that the Israelites did. You see? So we have to watch the company that we keep because then uh, we won't be able to take on those same uh, evil sins that they took on. So we have to be careful. Um, what was that? Number eight. Number eight says, and we must not engage in sexual immortality as some of them did, causing 23 of them to die in one day. 23 Thousand people died in one day. They say 24. Uh, uh, um, one scripture says 24, and Paul's scripture says 23,000. Doesn't matter. They died. So, um, 23,000, but just imagine that. 23,000 people died in one day for being disobedient. And it's not like that. They just did it that day. These people were doing it for a period of time. And God just got tired of it. He just got tired of it. And he did away with it. Um, and later on, I'm going to show you what he did to them too. Uh, number eight says, and we must, no, 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 no. Number nine says, nor should, nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and then died from snake bites. Some of those people put God to the test. You know how we are. Well, I'm going to just do it anyway. God will forgive me. You see, we get bold about the situation. And we can't do that. Um, so therefore, we have to watch our attitudes. Because our attitude is really what gets us in trouble. Just like the Israelites. They had an attitude problem. And the thing is, and see, the thing is, they had an attitude problem, but they didn't want to correct that attitude problem. That's what, this is where we get in trouble when we don't want to correct that attitude. Um, number 10 says, and don't and don't grumble. Oh, man, this is another one. Don't grumble as some of them did. See, that was two things. They, 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 they had two problems. They had they were, they were worshiping idols they were in, in feasting and drinking. That's two. That's two right there. Now we're going to talk about um, grumbling. Just grumble about everything. Didn't have no water. They grumbled about that. Didn't have no food. They grumbled about that. You know how some people are. You've been around a lot of them. They just grumble, grumble, grumble. That's all they like to do. And um, as some of them did and, and, and were destroyed by the angel of death. The angel of death came to them and destroyed them. See, this is why when you read the uh, uh, Corinthians uh, 11 chapter, um, where it talks about the Lord's Supper, this is why the Lord said, don't take this bread and this, 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 this wine, this, no, this bread and wine unworthily. Don't do it. Because this is why some, a lot of people are, are sleepy 
And a lot of people are, 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 are dead. They, you know, they die. Because we are drinking and eating the Lord's Supper in vain. Mm. Number 10 says, these things happen to them as example for us. This is what Paul is saying. All these things, they, this is an example so that we won't go the wrong, down, the wrong, down the same road that they went down. You know how it is in, in, in life as it is today. We go through a lot of things in, in just regular life, but it teaches us. If my brother went down that road and he didn't make it, I, I'm not going down that road. If I'm in snow and another brother go down uh, a, a, a slippery slope, and crash and go in a ditch. I'm not going down that slippery slope. I'm not gonna do it. Um they were they was they were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. We are living at the end of the age. See, this is why I said I'm writing it for y'all, so that you understand it. Don't be like the Corinthians, you see. It's for us too. This is what it's trying to tell us. Number 12 says, if you think you are standing standing wrong, be careful not to fall. Be careful. Paul saying, don't if you think you you think you standing in the wrong position, be careful, don't fall. Because it's so easy to fall. Because you'll get complacent. And then your then your conscience don't bother you, and then that's how you wind up falling. Um, number thirteen says the test of no, no the temptations in your life are not different from the other experiences. Uh, from what from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure it. And this is what these first 11 verses really talk about. There's, fear, there's really there's four concerns here. There are four concerns here. And this is what Paul is trying to illustrate so that he can get across to you. Um, so that you won't make these same mistakes. And uh, the footnotes, I'm going to go in with the footnotes and read this too. It said the footnotes, um, the, book, the book of Exodus chapters 13 through chapter 17. Read, if you read from 13 all the way to 17, all those chapters is telling you about what happened to Israel. And then, and also uh, Psalms 105, verse 30, 39 through 44, verses 39 through 44. It says it records the escape of the Israelites from Israel. They had been slaves, but Moses led them out, uh, out through the desert. The cloud was was a sign that God was with them the, to guide and to protect them. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit is for? To guide us and to protect us, to keep us from doing wrong if we listen. Um, where was I? Okay, and then you'll find that in Exodus, Exodus 13, chapter 13. 21 through 22. And then 14. Just read both chapters. Th read chapter 13 and chapter 14. Then you'll understand it. Um, they, were, uh, they were able to go through the Red Sea on dry land. God set, God sent a strong east wind to put to push back the water. So they could cross safely. See how God protects those whom we love? He's a protector. 
I don't care what the situation is on earth. It don't matter. God can move anything. God can move mountains if he wanted to. Um, and and uh, so they could cross safely. Okay, Exodus 14, 21 through 22. Perhaps the cloud was, was a picture of the Holy Spirit as he guided the church. Some writers think that it was. Christian baptism is like a like a, like the Israelite as they went through the sea. This is this is what Paul is saying. God uses God used Moses to rescue the Israelites from being say from being slaves in Egypt. In the same way, God used Christ to rescue us from becoming slaves to sin. Baptism in baptism into Moses is a is a perhaps similar to that in Romans 6 and 3. Uh, believers receive baptism into Christ. Baptism meant that the Israelite accepted Moses as their leader. Baptism in Christ means that we must be loyal to Christ. He is our leader. See, though, so though there was two, there was two instances there. And say Moses was our uh, their leader. Christ is our leader. So either way, they were baptized either with Christ or with us through a spiritual baptism. You see, even though we take on a, a, a a physical baptism. It's just to remind us. It's just that to, to 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 let us know that we agree with our leadership. Because this this is what Corinthians is all about. It's all about leadership anyway. So we attach ourselves to this leadership. And we have to respect that leadership as well. Especially when the leaders are holy. The leaders live right, act right, talk right, smell right, if that's possible. We have to understand that these people live godly lives. We have to obey. We can't have this attitude um, and, 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 and try to outthink the leader and try to have things our way. You know how it is in, in certain companies. Even in the church, you got people want to be above other people. People are power hungry. These are the things that goes on in the church. Goes on in the job. Goes in on in the whole world. And this is what God is trying to tell us. Okay. And then um, uh, this is uh, on this is on footnotes on verse three and four. It says the spiritual food was manna. It was a special kind of bread that God gave the Israelites during their time in the desert. Exodus 16, 11 through um, um, 15. Read that, read that whole chapter. That whole chapter is just awesome. When they were without water, Moses struck the rock. Water came out. Exodus 17, 1 through 7. No, uh, Numbers 20, 1 through 11. Um, 21 through 11. Okay. Moses got water from the rock at that beginning and, and ended uh, an end of their time in the desert. There was a, a, a popular Jew, Jewish belief that the rock followed the Israelites. It always gave them water to drink. Christ is like that rock in the desert. He gives Christians a continuous supply of spiritual water to keep them spiritually alive. To all to all to to call Christ a rock is a way to show that Christ is God. It is, it is a name, for God is, the, in the Old Testament, the example 
in Psalms 18 and 2, and also 31. All right, we're going to move on to footnotes on verse uh, 5. It says, although God had done so much for them, the Israelites did not obey him. So they died in the desert. Only Joshua and Caleb and the very young people entered the promised land. A lot of the old people died off because they were so stubborn and so hard-headed. Didn't want to change. Did not want to change. And they gave up their life. They paid for their, they paid for their disobedience. And it says, um, Paul was warning all Christians they may have received baptism. They may take the bread and wine during the Lord's Supper, but they must trust and obey. Otherwise, there is a danger. There is a danger now. If you don't, do, if you don't obey God, there's a danger. Just like the people in Israel coming out of Egypt, there was a danger that they will lose their spiritual life. This is the cost right there. You will lose your spiritual life. Is it really worth it? Disobeying God, hating your brother, being jealous, being envy, strifeful. Galatians, Galatians 5, 19 through 23. Is it really worth it? Read that. It talks about all those things that will cost you your spiritual relationship with God. And then it says, uh, Paul describes for different occasions when the Israelites sin. They are a warning to all Christians. God will punish those who do not obey him. And the first one is the worship of idols. If you have any type of idol and you worship it more than God, and you and you let that that idol, you worship that idol like it is God, like some of the people in, 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 in that came out of Egypt. And I'm gonna talk about that person too. One of the persons I'm gonna talk about. Uh, and the second one is, in, 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 that was in verse seven, and verse eight is uh, sexual sin. He talks about sexual sins. Is it really worth it losing your life over sexual sin? We talked about it in, that in uh, chapter, what was it? Chapter 7, I believe, where it talks about sexual sins between the husband and the wife. We had people doing wrong. Having sex with their own uh, 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 mother-in-law. And other sexual behaviors. That was totally wrong. So here we talk about the same thing here. Paul is trying to describe that. And then if we look again, like Paul said, in the book of Numbers 25 and 1, they lost over 24, 23,000 people that died. And then uh, the third one is uh, in verse 9. Testing the Lord's patience. See, those people tested God's patience. I told you, God see the sin. He acknowledged it, but he's waiting for you to repent and turn back to him. He'll give you time. He will give. He is so patient. Let me tell you, he ain't like us. We are not patient, but he is so patient. Man, he'll give you a year, a two year, three years, 10 years, 20 years to straighten up. And you turn around and spit in his face. By not accepting his blood, by not accepting his blood, that very thing that he died for to save you. The bread of life, the word of life. You disrespected him by not accepting it and believing it. And the fourth thing in verse um, 10. This is the key, key, key catcher. Complaining. Complaining. The, um, Korah. 
in um, Numbers, 16th chapter. He was a complainer. This brother had it made like Satan had it made in heaven. Satan was the doorkeeper in heaven. He complained about it. He wanted to be in there with God. No, I take that back. Because when you read Isaiah, Isaiah tell you that he wanted to be just like God. He wanted to be better than God. So this is what Corey wanted to do. He wasn't content now carrying the tent, the tent, the uh, I mean the the ark, ark around from place to place. He wasn't content with that. Um, let me read this, and it says here the Israelites complained against Moses as their leader. Uh, uh, Numbers four, one through thirty-eight. They complained because Moses had spoken about. God's punishment of Korah and those those who followed his those who followed in number 16 and 41 this time many people died from the disease then God said to only Joshua and Caleb and the very young people would enter the promised land Numbers 14, 20 through 31. All the rest would die in the desert. Paul used words from Exodus 12 and 23 when he spoke about the angels of death. What happened to you if you disobeyed? The Christians in Corinth had complained about Paul. I'm going to show you something when you complain about your leader, the one that lives holy, that's called by God. Mm. When, when, when they did this, they were complaining about God because God is the one that lives in Paul, the Holy Spirit is the one in Paul. You ain't talking about just Paul. You're talking about the one that lives in Paul. That's why you got to be careful who you talk about, about these pastors or that's, that's, that's leading the congregations. You got to be very careful about talking about them because you ain't talking about if you got a real godly person that's sold out for God, you ain't talking about just him. You're talking about the one that lives in him. Very dangerous ground to be standing on. Paul was warning them of, of, by this example, they must be careful. If not, they would fail to receive God receive what God has promised to the Christians. And now we're going to go back to Korah. I'm going to read and tell you what happened to Korah. Um, let me pull it up right quick. I, I, I tell you this, God is not playing. He is not marked. God is not marked. He is not playing around. Come on, it's coming up. It's coming up. Come on, come on. Isn't that something? Now technology want to mess up on me. <laughs> this is no good. You know the devil always, always trying to get in the mix. But you know what? I know about heart. And I'm going to tell you what happened to Korah. Korah was a person that um, that God used. Uh, he was an Israelite. And he also was a Levite. And God used him and his family to for the for the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And uh, some of them were priests. priests. Uh, Korah, he wanted to be a priest. And so he complained so much to, 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 to the people that Aaron heard about it and Moses heard about it. And Moses talked to him about it. Man, I wish I could bring this thing up so I could show it to you. I don't know what's going on. Hold on. It might come up now. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, here we go. 
It says Moses also reprimanded Korah for his uh, ingratitude and and uh, grasping for power. He wanted power. This is why a lot of people dangerous when you want power. It's just dangerous when you want to be more than what you are, like Satan did. So Satan was grasping for power in heaven. He wanted to be better than God, more than God. Come on, think about that now, the God of creation. Really? Think about it. God is the one that put your pastor in place. You want to be better than him? You want his position? Come on now, think. Think about that. Isn't it enough for you that the, that God, that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the Israelites community and brought you near himself now? He took you out of the community and brought you to, to in, inside where he was. Close to God, close to Moses, to do the work that the Lord at the Lord's tabernacle and to stand before the com the community and minister to them. Isn't that enough? You want more? <laughs> he has brought you and all your fellow Levites near himself. But now you are trying to get the priesthood too. You want to take my place. What's wrong with the brother? What's wrong with us? Is it, is it that important? Do you really want that much power? Wow, man. And you just can't stay meek and you just can't stay humble. Because when you stay meek and humble, God rewards you. God will increase your being in the, in, 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 in the community or the church. He does that. He gives the increase. In Numbers 16, 9 through 11, read that. But like I said, read the whole chapter now. And he reminded Korah that his rebellion was not against Moses or Aaron, but it was against the Lord that you and all your fellow, fellow followers how, how, listen at this, has banded together. You know what? Oh, man. You know how people get in church, just like Satan did in heaven. He got a little band together, a little group together. And that was his group. You had to be like them in order to get in the group. You see what I'm saying? We do it today. We do it all over the churches. God ain't pleased with that. He's not pleased with that. We got to break these these, these, these these little groups up in church. It's no good. There's no love in that. I, the, and the church is created for love. Christ died because of love. Don't get it twisted. We have to love our neighbor. This is what Paul is telling us about. And this is where he talks about the, the, the prophets, the ministers, uh, uh, the people that just want to just do good to help somebody. We all work together. We are all in one body. And that's to love. That's to do good. God's kingdom is founded on love and love alone. And then I'm on, and you'll find that in verse 11. Um, all right, let me go down here right quick. Okay, God. God commanded that the rest of the assembly move away from Korah, uh, Dathan, and Abram, and their, and their tents. He didn't want them so see how God moved people away. And, and that's what Paul was talking about. And in, in other scriptures, he said, separate yourself. Because they ain't good for you. Because you'll start thinking and acting just like them. Moses uh pronounced a curse upon the rebels. And immediately, listen at this boy, listen at what happened to him. Immediately the ground opened. Under, under them split apart 
and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them and their household. All their household was swallowed up too. And all these associated with Korah, the friend, all of them swallowed up. Since you want to be like them, go like them. Together, together um, with their possessions, possessions too, you know, you can take all of which, because that's what you live for anyway, is possessions, power and possession. It goes hand in hand. Take that too. We don't want it. God don't need it. They went down alive into the realm of the dead, meaning hell, Hades, with everything they own, the earth closed over them, and they perished and were gone from the community. Gone, vanished. Do we really want to live like that? Do we really? This is what happened to a man. This is what happened to his whole family. This is what happened to a whole, his whole community that he fellowship with. Just like Satan. Look what happened to Satan when he got kicked out of heaven. Him and all his cronies came with him, thrown down into the pit. Oh, yeah, God got somewhere for you. When you don't want to do right, he got somewhere for you. In, including me. I, I'm not, look, I try my best to live right every day. Do I make mistakes? Of course I do. But I go to the throne room of grace. I got sense enough to do that. I'm not going to just hear God and say, it ain't me. No, I'm not going to do like Judas. Be with God all this long and betray him? Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. And then go kill myself? Oh, no, 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 no. Got to be something better than that. And the footnotes on verse um, 10, uh, 11 through 13, it says, uh, Paul believed that God, Paul believed that God told Moses to write these scriptures. Then in the future, people could avoid the sin of the Israelites. The, the, Jesus said, I came, I didn't come here to, to do away with the law, but I came to fulfill it. Nothing has, it had never been done to fulfill the law with love. Jesus did it. And, and then what he did, he loved God, he loved his neighbor, and he loved his enemy as well. See, this is what, this is what, this is what the, the, the law the commandment of God, of Christ will do for you. You got to love all three. And all the prophecies that hang on it, you got to love it. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a teacher, it's a lesson. The Christian, to Christians at the, the Christians at the Corinthian, at Corinthian lived um, after the death and resurrection of Jesus. They were in the new age that led to the final time of God's plan for the world. And, and, and footnotes on verse 12 says, although God had done so much for them, the Israelite failed. It can, it can be easy for someone who is too confident to sin. Mm, confident in sin. Peter said that, that he would be loyal to Jesus. Um, whatever happened, instead, he said three times that he did not even know Jesus. First, he said, I'm going to love you, Lord. I would never do that, Lord. But when the pressure hit him, when the people said they're going to kill him, uh-uh. He gave in. He said, I don't know him. I never seen him. You gotta be careful with what you say and what you do. See, if you say you're gonna die for the Lord, die for him. Don't be needed. Okay, number 13, verse 13 says, after this warning, Paul encouraged the Christians in Corinth. Number one, they are not to only only they are not the only people who suffered temptation. Other people also suffered temptation. And they defeated them. They defeat them with God's help. 
That, that That's the key. You need God's help to defeat this problem. With feet sin, you need God's help. Just like you needed Jesus' help for you to go to the Father and come one with him, you need his help. You still need him to help you with this sin that you still... He took away the sin in other words. He took it away. He gave you forgiveness for it. He made that relationship right with God again. But you still have a desire in your flesh. You still got a, a, a practice in your flesh that needs to be destroyed. This is when we come to Jesus and ask Jesus, help us get rid of it. Because we already know he done did all of this up, other stuff. Dying on the cross. Huh? Suffer persecution. For your sake. So we know he can take it away. We know it. But we got to give it to him. Okay. Number two says, God does not allow anyone to suffer a test that is beyond his spiritual strength. Mm. There is, number three says, there is a way and end to uh, temptation. Christians can defeat it with God's help. They are like an army in a narrow mountain. Remember Samson in that narrow spot? He defeated that whole 1,000 army of armed men, men in that army. He defeated them with God's help. This is what Paul's trying to tell us. In the mountain, wrought, 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 who find a way to escape from their enemies. Samson found that way to escape. He found the way. God. He found a way with God. Even when he did wrong, he turned back to God and asked him for help. And that's what we, that's all Paul is trying to tell us. If, if you find yourself in a, in a bad spot, bad situation, just turn and ask God. He'll help you. God loves you, my people, and I love you too. I want all of us to make it into heaven. And we will live in that new Jerusalem together where there will be no more crime, no more pain, no more suffering, no more diabetes, no more headaches. headaches. You see what I'm saying? Just be peace, love, joy, happiness. Praise in the Lord. That's what I look forward to right now. Lord help me. God bless you, my people. Till we meet again. God bless you.